I'm talking with George White, Mitchell Hearn, about GitHub and what is it. Keep reading about it, keep uh, seeing references to it. Our guys use it here at Cantina all the time. Right. I'm only sort of understanding what for. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I know that basically it's, uh, its its functional role is you know source code management. That's right, source control basically. But then there's management. there's an open source and social component on top of that. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could tell me a little bit about just right. you know what is it basically? Okay, cool. So GitHub is basically hosted Git. Git is a is a source control system. Um, uh, think of it as a versioning system for software um, that was written by Linus Torvalds, the same guy who's responsible for for the, the Linux core. Uh, or Linux kernel. So, so real pedigree. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's serious. Yeah, basically, Linus was using another piece of software to to do his source control, and then they changed their licensing. He got upset and essentially rewrote all the stuff in a weekend and came up with a really great sort of distributed system for source control management. Um, and what's exciting about Git specifically, outside of the context of GitHub, is that it makes branching really easy. So, if you think about that, that you have a bunch of code and you want to be able to say, I want to work on some of it without having to affect the main line of development, that's what Git's for. Gotcha. Um, so now where GitHub comes into play, it's basically a um, hosted solution for Git. Right? So essentially we have a server-side website that has all of your Git repositories on it. Um, and by the nature of sort of the distributed code that we have, this very easy, easily branch code, where everyone has a local copy of the repository, which is another aspect of Git, that kind of makes it social by, by default. And if we start thinking about the way that open source project work, where basically the whole point with open source, or one of the whole points, was to, to say, I open this project up and other people can play in it, Git as a source control system, and GitHub as a solution for hosting that, make it very easy to do so. Mm -hmm. So the social component comes from the type of projects that initially were, were being used, where like the Linux kernel, for instance, is an open source project, which by their nature are social. And now GitHub has basically said, well, we're going to try and make this even more social. Is, is there a particular kind of project that you tend to find there? I mean, are there particular languages, not, particular scales of projects? Not so much particular languages. Scales, the projects tend to be um, small and focused, although there are a lot of really large scale projects there. Um, but, but if you look at the, at the corpus of all of the, the different repositories that exist inside of GitHub, most of them are probably pretty small. Um, and one of the things that's really nice about GitHub is it has a couple different things. One, it makes it easy to post your small project, and if your project is open source, it's free to host it, which mm -hmm. is a huge thing. Um, but they also have this thing called a gist, which is basically like a short code note. We, in fact, use them on our blog. Um, and that allows you to ba basically make very quickly um, uh, revision controlled notes that you can basically put up. Um, and you could use them for code, you could use them for text, doesn't really matter what you use them for, but you can put a bunch of stuff up there. Um, so they made it really easy and very fast to put all this, this, this code up. Um, and so open source projects have gravitated there, and that's, that's where a lot of stuff is. But, but given that a lot of us are both contributors to open source projects and to closed source projects or to, to private projects, we wanted to take those, the excellent tools that we've had in open source and bring them into, into closed projects. Gotcha. Um, so, but because of the nature of the type of source control we have, there's this thing called forking, where basically, let's say you post a project that's going to be something around um, a, a Marcom application, right? You can put it up in GitHub, make it open source, and then I can fork it, which basically means I can take my own copy of it and work on it separately and um, not affect the, the, the original root that we created. Um, and, and so that's a sort of social interaction where you're sort of, you could think of it as donating certain types of code for me to use and for me to play around with. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there's a game aspect to it if you want to think about it in a larger game sense. Um, Tell me a little bit about the, the sort of the social aspect of this. I mean, this is social like Facebook is social, or social like you know, Twitter is social. It's not social in that social. Well, it has the same notion of a social graph, right? So, for instance, when um, I post a project and other people join me on that project, those people could be thought of as my friends in that in the conventional social networking, mm -hmm. social media sense. Um, but they're not necessarily. We're more like collaborators or coworkers. We may have relationships that are that are that are in there. There's also the sort of thing of there are people who are um, leaders or, or um, taste makers, and use, those are people you may watch um, or, or observe their projects or follow their projects more more properly or even sometimes fork them more often. So, so you do have the same notion of um, you know reputation then of of some people are you know 
have you know take up more space, if you will, or have a higher profile than uh, definitely your, your the average folks. Definitely, I think that there are there are people who are. Um, it's you can think of it to some extent as a meritocracy, right? So so I mentioned Linus Torvalds before. People uh, admire Linus because of the things he did around Linux and the things actually now he's done around Git. So he's kind of proven his worth to this larger community. Um, one of the things, the social aspects of, of GitHub could be said to be how much you contribute to the public uh, commons, right? How much open source code do you put out there? And that will quite often get you followed by people who need the solutions you put forward or want to uh, uh, improve the solutions that you've got out there. So, so there is that sort of, yeah, get out there and then there's, there's a worth that you can prove by having a lot of code out there that's available for the people to use and to see. So in, in the, uh, uh, I wonder if in a large organization, mm -hmm. um, you know, where you have, you know, a lot of non-technical people and a lot of technical people, mm -hmm. if, is, you know, is there any cause for people to be sort of concerned or questioning that, that they have their technical team communicating amongst even potentially their competitors in this space that, that the non-techs have almost no access to? Um, I don't think so. You know, but then I'm also on the other side of that, right? <laughs> I'm one of those people who participates in this way, but um, I, I don't think so because GitHub does make a distinction between private closed projects and open projects. Um, and cl private closed projects are the ones you basically have to pay them to host. Um, and you can use Git, by the way, without GitHub, and, and there's plenty of reason to do that in, in those internal pieces. But you know, even here at Cantina, we use it um, for, for customer projects, and it's, it's, it's okay, we're, we're within the bounds. We only invite the people who are supposed to be there. We're not sharing outside the scope of, of the, the core team or the team that's supposed to have responsibility. So I don't think it's really a concern. Um, it doesn't have some of those inherent privacy issues that you have with like a Facebook or Twitter or something like that, because it isn't necess there, there is sort of this notion of purely private, which is not really semi-private in the way that it is with Facebook. Um, and GitHub's not necessarily interested in, in peering into your, your social graph in the right, same way. Right. So not as, not the same kind of privacy concerns that, that we see in Facebook and other. Uh, I don't places. I don't think so. Generally speaking, um, there is you know there can be problems as with, as with anything. Um, you know, a lot of companies do have concerns about open source and what what knowledge goes between the closed world that a developer might be working in and the open world that they might be working in. But that's that we're talking about firewalls internally in people's brains, right? And we're not we're, the, the social tools don't necessarily affect that right. uh, in the same way that it might be, you know, I learned something at work and then I use it in a, in a, in a project outside or vice versa. You know, uh, the funny thing is we typically have, a, we're okay with the idea if I learned something outside and I bring it into the project. We don't like the idea that I tip bring learn something inside and bring it out, right? It's the value proposition typically is one way. So it's not really a, kind of a secret society of, of uh, technical people. No, no. There's, there's no Illuminati connection. No, in fact, actually the whole thing is pretty open. One of the great things about GitHub is that it's really easy for people to see code, right? And, and, and when they say for all, they really do mean for all. They would love to see, you know, writers using GitHub. Mm. If, if you're a writer and, you're, and you're, you need to control revision of how your work is going, learning Git is actually not a bad way to go. Mm. It gives you serious control over being able to play with new ideas and then go back to source, re reintegrate things. All source control systems are really around managing text, right? At the end of the day, code, most code is really just what we write as words in a funny language. Um, so I, I do believe that, that GitHub has a strong mission to see the idea of source control go beyond simply what technical people do. They'd like to see it go out to really everyone. And they'd like to see that non-technical people can use all that repository of open code to become more technical and really to, to join that society. So, yeah, no, not secret society. In fact, if anything, um, uh, maybe, maybe a bit libertarian. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, I think I'll have to look into it as a writer then. Cool. Excellent. Well, thanks, George. Sure.